Welcome back everybody to Extreme Off-Road Silly Bills and today we're dealing with the 1997 Mitsubishi Montero Evolution. Now this has 1,356 horsepower, 1,021 pounds-feet of torque from a 7.5 litre twin turbocharged V8 engine. The vehicle itself now weighs 3,531 pounds. Still has all-wheel drive but it now has even higher off-road ground clearance. It's by about 0.3 of an inch and it has now bigger off-road tyres and it can now do 0 to 16 in 3.53 seconds 0 to 105.767 seconds and go to a top speed of 220 miles an hour so as you can see there's one outlier in terms of the stats in terms of being pretty poor and that is the handling which I guess is no surprise given it's got more than a thousand horsepower than it had originally and it is at the end of the day still a small you know wheelbase high riding uh, off-roader so yeah typically they are not the best handling versions of off-road vehicles but the speed acceleration launch and off-road capability are all excellent braking is decent um, obviously it's not the lightest of vehicles but it is quite small so yeah if we're going to get into any tricky situations we shouldn't be hitting anything too hard as we don't have much in the way of bodywork to uh, hit anything with but yeah would like better brakes for a car that has well over 1300 horsepower and uh, it's still quite a weighty thing even though it's not the biggest of off-roaders so um, yeah this could go either way to be honest the fastest Mitsubishi that we've had has been the Sierra Enterprises Lancer Evolution Time Attack which got into 40... well it's currently in 41st place pretty decent time for car that is as far as I'm concerned not really meant for going off-road whereas this is meant for going off-road but that typically does not mean that a car is going to be successful on this series Sounds a bit silly to say that, but it is just the case. You only have to look at the top 10 for that. The other issue is this could easily roll over. We've already seen it slightly lift up with one of its front wheels. Which, yeah. Isn't too surprising. You know, off road vehicles of this size um, were not notable for um, having uh, handling issues, especially when it came to a uh, sudden maneuvers in case of an emergency. They were characterised by their abilities to roll over or at least lift up the front end or go onto two wheels which obviously is not helpful. If you're trying to stop a car you want as much braking ability as possible and having half your wheels in the air is not useful whatsoever. And even though we have had some wheel action in the air while well, the rest of the car is on the ground, it's not proved too much of an issue so far. Really didn't like the landing there. It's one of the sketchiest landings that we've had on a, for a vehicle on this uh, series for a while. But because it does have all-wheel drive and that is a standard to this car, and all of that power it's able to fly out the corners. Even though it's far from a lightweight, it's hardly a heavyweight either, so the power is not really getting all that much in the way of being wasted. And yeah, plenty of acceleration on the go. Getting to some good rates of speed on top of that. seem a little bit messier than the Toyota GR Yaris that we had in the previous episode but even though that was quite a uh, easy car to drive and relatively smooth it yeah was not as fast as we hoped it would be. This is again another all-wheel drive a standard small wheel based car but it is obviously far more off-road orientated but also heavier. I don't think the weight in this car is playing too much of an issue. The car is still nimble at the end of the day due to how small it is. And the car could weigh another 1500 pounds more than this and this amount of power would still not struggle with it, so yeah. The weight is a factor, but 
not as much of as a negative as you might expect. And there we go. So I think we're actually slower than the GR Yaris from the previous episode, and we're definitely slower than the uh, fastest Mitsubishi uh, by about 11 seconds or nearabouts. Which is a bit of a shame. I was hoping it would be quicker than that, given the amount of power that it's got. And we're also slower than the Galant VR4, which is the only other Mitsubishi that we've had before this one, by nearly 3 seconds. So that is a shame, really. I was hoping for a much faster time, given it does have the uh, off-road capability and such and such. And it's about 1.5 seconds slower than the GR Yaris from the previous episode, which, yeah was obviously slow but obviously not as slow as this um, clearly the uh, more controllable Yaris was faster than this somewhat manic and on the edge Mitsubishi Montero so uh, yeah that's a bit of a shame really because I did feel like it was quite fast but evidently not as fast as I would have liked and uh, yeah I did at the end of the day have to be a little bit cautious with it at some times because it was like I said raising up one of the front wheels it did feel at times like it wanted to roll over and on landings in particular it was quite bouncy as we saw on the big jump there it did not like that landing whatsoever so uh, yeah just a little bit too much troublesome in certain areas to make it properly quick but still a really rather fun car it's part of a fantastic car pack the JDM Jewels car pack so if you haven't got that already I do highly recommend it because this is one of the best ones out of the car pack and it's generally one of the best car packs that we've had in this game if not in you know general Forza history when it comes down to the smaller four car car pack so uh yeah but nonetheless thank you for watching and i'll see you in the next one bye